welcome back to ASEAN News and here are the latest updated ones. Virgilio Ducarum da Silva was created as a new cardinal by Pope Francis and among 20 others. On Saturday, August 22, 2022, Pope Francis inducted in Virgilio Ducarum da Silva as new cardinal for Timor-Leste in St. Peter's Basilica, Vatican. Pope Francis warned 20 cardinals from around the world, choosing men who mostly agree with his vision of more progressive and inclusive charge and influencing their choice of his eventual successor. Francis, 85, presided at the ceremony known as Consistory, telling the new cardinals to show concern for ordinary people despite the high rank that will bring them into contact with the powerful of the earth. The ceremony marked the eighth time Francis has put his stamp on the church future with a new intake of cardinals who will serve as his top advisors and administrators at the Vatican and around the globe. Those under 80 and 60 among the 20 newcomers can enter a conclave to elect a new pope from among themselves after he dies or resign. Meanwhile, Francis told Reuters in an interview last month that if he does resign in the future for health reasons instead of dying in office, he has no plans to do so anytime soon. This means he could name even more cardinals as soon as next year. The cardinals come from East Timor, Britain, South Korea, Spain, France, Nigeria, Brazil, India, the United States, Italy, Ghana, Singapore, Paraguay and Colombia. One hotel was damaged after an earthquake hit the tourist island of Bali, Indonesia. A hotel was damaged after a moderate earthquake shook Indonesia's tourist island of Bali. In a footage filmed by a hotel guest, a large section of a wall along a corridor had broken off and pebble-sized debris was strewn around the floor of a room nearby. According to witnesses that the quake, which Indonesia's Meteorology and Geophysics Agency said was 5.6 magnitude, lasted for around a minute and led to many residents spilling from buildings onto streets. Witnesses say it occurred at 36 minutes past 16 local time and was felt across the island and neighboring Lombok. Meanwhile, officials at the local and national disaster mitigation agencies did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Singaporeans celebrate an of ban on sex between men. LGBTQ groups welcomed the decision but expressed concern that plans to protect the definition of marriage as between a man and a woman would prepare to a discrimination. After Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said Singapore will decriminalize sex between men but has no plans to change the legal definition of marriage as between a man and a woman. Eyewitness clips showed people cheering after the Prime Minister made the announcement on the television. It was unclear exactly when the law will be repealed. The law is not currently enforced and there have been no known convictions for sex between consulting adult males for decades, but offenders can theoretically be jailed for up to two years under the law. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer groups have brought multiple legal challenges attempting to strike down the law, but none have succeeded. Singapore becomes the latest Asian country to move towards ending discrimination against members of the LGBTQ community. In 2018, India's highest court scrapped a colonial era ban on sex between consulting adult males, while Thailand has recently edged closer to legalizing same-sex unions. Thailand capital prepares for protests over Prime Minister's term limit. Thai authorities ramped up security in the capital ahead of protests, calling on the Prime Minister to resign as the courts consider whether to take up a petition to rule on when his constitutionally stipulated eight-year term is up. Police cordoned off areas around the Prime Minister's offices, known as the Government House in central Bangkok, setting up barricades including shipping containers and diverting traffic. The main opposition party and nearly two-thirds of Thais questioned in an opinion poll believe Prime Minister Prayu Chan Ocha, who took power in 2004 coup, should step down because his time as junta chief counts towards his term. Prayut 68 was army chief when he mounted a coup in 2014 to overthrow an elected government. He became a civilian prime minister in 2019 after an election held under a military drafted constitution. After five years, Myanmar's Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh wants to return home. More than a million Rohingya are living in squalid camps in southern Bangladesh, compromising the world's largest refugee settlement with little prospect of returning to Myanmar where they are mostly denied citizenship and other rights. Refugees at the Kutapalong camp in Cox's Bazar, Bangladesh said they were ready to return home. <laughs> 
in 2017 they Myanmar pushed us in Bangladesh and now it is five years so now we don't want to stay here don't want refugee life now we are ready to go back to our country one more demand and that they must accept us as a Rohingya community which they don't recognize they must declare us as a Rohingya community to the whole world before we go back it's been five years since we came here. We don't want to stay in the camps as refugees. Now we want to go back to Burma. If we go, we want the security for our life and wealth there. We must get the guarantee. Oh. The vast majority fled to neighboring Bangladesh during a military crackdown in 2017 that the United Nations had said was carried out with genocidal intent. Myanmar denies genocide, saying it was waging a legitimate campaign against insurgents who attacked police posts. Myanmar is facing charges of genocide at the International Court of Justice in The Hague over the violence. Health Minister says spot smoking tourists not welcome in Thailand. Thailand's health minister discouraged tourists from visiting the country only to smoke weed just two months after the laws were passed that they have largely decriminalized the drug. Thailand's cannabis policy focuses only on medical and health purpose and nothing else. So uh, the news about coming into Thailand is the land of cannabis free. You can smoke freely everywhere on our soil. That's fake news. That's not true. And we don't welcome those kind of tourists. We want tourists to come to Thailand to understand our culture, our traditions, and the beauty of our country. In 2018, Thailand became the first Southeast Asian country to legalize cannabis for medical use. In June, the entire plant was decriminalized, leading to widespread recreational use. But those smoking in public risk facing a three-month jail sentence or fines up to 25,000 baht. Last year, the pandemic slashed foreign arrivals to just 428,000 compared to a record of nearly 40 million in 2019. Thailand has focused its cannabis policy on the 28 billion baht industry built around its medical health benefits. Anutin said, however, recreational use could be explored once there was better understanding of the drug. At least seven people were injured after several bombs and arson attacks rock in southern Thailand. Explosions and fires ripped up through at least 17 locations in southern Thailand, injuring seven people in what appeared to be multiple coordinated attacks. According to police and military statements that the bombing and arson attacks happened after midnight and targeted convenience stores in a gas station across three provinces. Explosive ordnance teams officers were seen at the explosion sites. No one has claimed responsibility for the attacks so far. Around 30 minutes past midnight, when the 7-Eleven delivered truck came, I was in the back dealing with the inventory and I heard the blast, so I used the back door to escape. Provinces in southern Thailand, along the border with Malaysia, have seen a decades-long low-level insurgency in which the Thai government has battled shadowy groups seeking independence for the predominantly Muslim provinces of Patani, Yala, Naratiwat and parts of Songkla. Najib Razak has not received fair trial before top court rejects his final appeal. Malaysia's former Prime Minister Najib Razak said he was not given a fair trial in his final appeal hours before Malaysia's top court upholds a guilty verdict against him in the 1MDB case. Speaking to supporters and members of the media outside the federal court, Najib thanked them and said everything he proposed to the court was rejected. First, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up and showing me your support. I have tried with all that I can, but everything I propose to the court is rejected. I did not get my justice and I didn't get a fair trial based on its principles. Yeah. 
Malaysia's Federal Court on Tuesday upheld Najib's guilty conviction in a 12-year jail sentence on corruption charges. The top court also denied Najib's request for a stay of sentence. The 69-year-old former premier was found guilty in July 2020 of criminal breach of trust, abuse of power, and money laundering for illegally receiving about 10 million from SRC International, a former unit of state fund One Malaysia Development Berhard. Najib, who pleaded not guilty, was sentenced to 12 years jail and a 210 million ringgit or 46.84 million dollar fine. Xiang launches its first freight train service to Vietnam. Northwest China's Shanxi province launched its first freight train service from Xi'an to Vietnam's capital, Hanoi, providing another low-cost and high-efficient service to the international freight road. The asbestos was transported to Xi'an from Kazakhstan on a returned China-Europe freight train and went through custom transits in Xi'an before going to Vietnam. The whole process was seamless connection between China-Europe freight train and China-Vietnam freight train. Xi'an launched a total of 2,217 freight trains to Europe in the first seven months of 2022, delivering 1,855 million tons of cargo. The freight train to Vietnam will provide a new road for cargo from Europe and Central Asia to ASEAN countries and will help enterprises to explore the ASEAN market. And thank you for watching everyone. Enjoy weekdays ahead. Stay safe, stay healthy. See you soon.